This is the new M1 MacBook Air, and this is the new M1 MacBook Pro. I've been using both of these for the last two weeks, testing them out. And so in this video, I'm gonna be answering a question that's been plaguing philosophers since the dawn of time. Do you go for the M1 MacBook Air or do you go for the M1 MacBook Pro? I'm gonna talk about seven reasons about how you can make your decision, and I'm gonna explain why I am personally going for the M1 MacBook Pro. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor based in the UK, and on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that help us live healthier, happier, more productive lives. And to be honest, nothing gets a productivity nerd like me more excited than when new Apple products, specifically new MacBooks come out because these are the real powerhouses of my personal productivity. Now, quick overview, if you haven't already seen 100 videos about this, these new M1 chips are a total game changer because Apple is moving away from the Intel chips that used to run the MacBooks more to their own Apple designed silicon M1 chips, which is sort of like the chips they have in iPhones and iPads, which is what makes iPhones and iPads ridiculously fast. And now that's what's made these new MacBooks and the new Mac mini ridiculously fast as well. So looking at prices, the MacBook Air starts at $1,000, but the MacBook Pro starts at $1,300 and it's exactly the same chip. So what are the differences that justify the extra $300 that you're gonna pay for a MacBook Pro compared to the MacBook Air? Let's start with performance. Now the two laptops do have exactly the same chip in them, but the MacBook Pro has a fan and active cooling, whereas the MacBook Air does not have a fan. Essentially what that means is the MacBook Pro and the Mac mini, because they've got fans, they're gonna be capable of more sustained performance over a long period of time. Whereas the MacBook Air will have the identical peak performance, but it will have less good sustained performance because it won't have any fans to actively cool it when the chip is getting hot and performing high intensive tasks. Now, I actually had a call with the Apple marketing team about this and I asked this exact question, like, is there much of a difference in performance? Who should go for the MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro? And what they were saying is that honestly, the vast majority of people will probably be completely okay with a MacBook Air. The only time you're gonna notice a difference is if you are hitting peak performance workloads and doing that for many hours each day. So for example, someone like me, if I edit a video maybe once a week, I won't need a MacBook Pro. I will just be all right with a MacBook Air. But if I'm editing videos for hours and hours and hours a day or using intensive graphics applications like Photoshop or Lightroom or doing tons and tons of 3D modeling or doing lots of gaming, at that point, I might be hitting those peak performance levels and need to sustain it throughout the day. The MacBook Air is totally fine for short bursts, whereas the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini are better for sustained performance over a long period of time. What does that mean for me? So if I was still editing my own videos, I would absolutely go for the MacBook Pro in a heartbeat because I would actually be spending hours and hours each day in Final Cut in my editing software. But because I don't really edit my own videos anymore, I only dabble in video editing occasionally, the MacBook Air would be completely fine for me personally on the processor front. And in fact, the MacBook Air is what I've been recommending to most of my friends who've been asking me for recommendations, MacBook Air versus MacBook Pro. Secondly, let's talk about the battery. Now, this is a reason to go for the MacBook Pro for me because in theory, the MacBook Pro has two hour greater battery life than the MacBook Air. I haven't really done any proper scientific testing of this, but anecdotally, I do notice this battery runs out slightly less quickly than this battery runs out, even though it's still a really, really long time. I almost I feel like I almost never need to charge the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air because it's like a 15 hour battery life versus a 17 hour battery life for basic web browsing-y things. Now, the question is, is this extra two hours of battery life enough to justify the $300 investment in the MacBook Pro compared to the MacBook Air? And in my book, the answer is kind of yes, because it's the most annoying thing in the world when a laptop runs out of battery. With my old 2018 MacBook Pro, I pretty much have to carry the charger wherever I take it because it would only get like three to five hours of battery life depending on what sort of stuff I'm doing. These have much longer battery life in between them. But theoretically, I'm planning to hold on to one of these laptops for the next few years. Now in that time, if there is even one occasion where the extra two hours of battery life on the MacBook Pro allows me to get an extra hour or even half an hour of work in, that will, for me personally, easily justify the extra $300 investment because, not to flex here, but I value my time at something like $1,000 to $2,000 per hour. So if I can do an hour of work, that adds $1,000 to $2,000 of value to my business overall. And therefore, spending an extra $300 to upgrade a battery life by an extra two hours is actually a totally reasonable choice for someone like me who's in that position where I'm weighing up the return on, on investment. If you're not someone who's a business owner buying one of these as a business expense and you are on some kind of budget, then honestly, I think the MacBook Air is probably the, the way to go. Like 15 hours battery life is not much different to 17 hours battery life. And as long as you're charging it at the end of the day or overnight, you're, you probably won't notice a difference between the two. The only time you probably notice a difference is if you were like a traveling for a whole weekend and using your laptop extensively and not wanting to bring your charger along. In that point, maybe the extra two hours would make a difference. Thirdly, let's talk about portability. Now, the MacBook Pro is 
about 90 grams heavier than the MacBook Air. And honestly, when I hold them side by side, I can notice a difference in the weight because I know this one is slightly heavier, but like it's not realistically something I would actually notice day to day. That extra 90 grams is not gonna make any difference to my life in the slightest. And so in terms of portability, I don't think that is a reason to go for the MacBook Air because it's 90 grams lighter than the MacBook Pro. I don't think portability should play much of a you know, a role in your decision making. Let's now talk about the microphones. Now, this is actually quite important because I do a lot of interviews, a lot of podcasts, and I'm sure you're listening to this, even if you don't do podcasts and interviews, you're probably on a reasonable number of Zoom calls or video calls each day. And so in an ideal world, you wanna have a laptop that has reasonable microphones in it. Now, in theory, the MacBook Pro has studio quality microphones, like a three-way microphone array or something like that, whereas the MacBook Air just has standard microphones. So I'm now gonna do a test of both microphones and we'll see if we can notice a difference between them. So this is a test of the microphone quality on the MacBook Air. What does this sound like? This is a test of the microphone quality on the MacBook Pro. What does that sound like? In theory, because the webcam and the processor on both of these laptops is identical, you shouldn't see much of a difference in webcam quality, but potentially this MacBook Pro might have slightly better microphones. I'm not really sure what it's gonna sound like until I see the edit, but maybe you can decide for yourself. Does this microphone on the MacBook Pro sound significantly better than this microphone on the MacBook Air? Who knows? you can decide. But in theory, I'm going to stick with the MacBook Pro because if Apple tells me it's got a more legit microphone, then even if I just need to record one podcast and I forget my microphone one day, I'll feel a lot better having the best quality that I can get on a MacBook rather than having a slightly worse quality on a MacBook Air. And you'll notice I'm kind of equidistant from both of these. So in theory, my distance from the microphone shouldn't make much difference. I am talking to these as if I would be doing a Zoom call on one of these microphones. And actually I've just played back and I can tell a difference between the microphone quality on the MacBook Pro versus the MacBook Air, although the MacBook Pro also has slightly better speakers, so maybe that plays a factor as well. Next, let's test the speakers on both of these. Now, this is always gonna be a little bit difficult, so I'll give you my subjective opinion, but I also bring the microphone towards them so you can hear what it sounds like from both of the speakers. This microphone is pointing here and we'll see what this sounds like. That was the MacBook Air. Swap it up to the MacBook Pro, exactly the same position. Honestly, let's try this. Honestly, it's really quite hard for me to subjectively to tell the difference between the two speakers. Theoretically, the MacBook Pro has better quality speakers. Maybe you've been able to judge that a little bit better um, from this microphone. I think because I know it's got better quality speakers, it feels to me like there is a little bit more bass and the sound feels a little bit more, more rich. But I don't know, if I was doing a blind test, would I really know the difference between the two? So yeah, speakers don't really make a major difference in my subjective opinion as a non-audiophile, but if you are super into music and stuff and you're not gonna use an external speaker or headphones, then maybe the MacBook Pro would justify the extra $300 investment for you. For me personally, the speakers is not a reason to go for this. Let's now talk about the screen brightness. Now, the difference in brightness, in peak brightness, is that the MacBook Air goes up to 400 nits, whereas the MacBook Pro goes up to 500 nits. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you ramp up the brightness all the way to the max, I can tell that the MacBook Pro is slightly brighter than the MacBook Air. Usually the screen brightness doesn't make much of a difference because I personally don't usually have either of them on full brightness. The only circumstance in which it does make a difference is if I'm trying to work outdoors where there is glaring sunlight shining on the screens. And in that case, I will appreciate the extra 100 nits brightness of the MacBook Pro. And in fact, even with this big ass light shining in front of me, I can kind of tell the difference between them. And I would rather use the MacBook Pro at full brightness than the MacBook Air at full brightness, just because a brighter screen is just a little bit higher quality. Especially if you're using these laptops to watch a lot of things, if you watch a lot of Netflix or YouTube or whatever, Maybe you'll appreciate having a slightly brighter screen, especially if in the summer you're gonna take it outdoors as well. Finally, let's talk about the touch bar. Now, the MacBook Pro has a touch bar, whereas the MacBook Air does not have a touch bar. Me personally, I'm actually not a fan of the touch bar. I would rather have the physical buttons on the MacBook Air, which are things like brightness and volume and forward and back, next track, play, pause on Spotify, rather than have the touch bar, because I'm always a little bit annoyed by the touch bar. Thankfully, both have a physical escape key and both of them have the touch ID sensor in the top right hand corner. But another main question that you're gonna ask yourself is do you care about the touch bar? For me, actually, the fact that the MacBook Pro has a touch bar is a reason to not go for the MacBook Pro. <laughs> I would rather have a non-touch bar than a touch bar. And I think it's unfortunate that the MacBook Pro has a touch bar. All right, so those were the seven different factors that are the differences between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Otherwise, basically everything between them is identical. Now I'm gonna share my personal opinion. So I think for the vast majority of people watching this, you can probably go for the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air is fantastic. And I don't think a lot of these different factors will be worth it for the vast majority of people. And in fact, for most of my friends, whether or not they dabble in video editing or dabble in coding or dabble in graphic design or whatever, 
I've just been advising them to go for the MacBook Air. But having said that, I'm personally going for the MacBook Pro and I've got kind of three main reasons for doing that that I touched on throughout the video. Firstly is the battery life. If I even get maybe an extra half an hour of work on this, because it has more battery than the MacBook Air would have run out of battery, that counterfactual analysis means that it would be totally worth it for me to spend the extra $300 to go for the MacBook Pro. Secondly, I do prefer the fact that it has a slightly higher quality microphone because I do a lot of podcast recordings and it means that if for some reason I need to record a voiceover and I don't have a proper microphone with me for whatever reason, it means I'll be able to get away with the microphone on the MacBook Pro. And thirdly, when it comes to the power, now right now, my personal workflow does not require sustained levels of high performance because I don't really do many high performance type activities. But for example, next year, I'm planning to live in different European cities for a month at a time where I'm not gonna be bringing my Mac mini along. And so my main device is gonna be the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air. And because I do a lot of online courses like my part-time YouTuber Academy, where I am on a Zoom call with a wide, and wide ethernet cable and recording the screen and feeding like a webcam feed straight into my laptop, that is quite, kind of resource intensive, especially when you're recording a screen and then exporting it out for like a solid two and a half hours. That is when my old 2018 MacBook Pro, that would really bring it to bring it to its knees and the fans would be whirring all the time and, and stuff. And for me, if I can spend an extra $300 to get the safety blanket of knowing that there is a fan, which can cool the processor, if for some reason that requires a large amount of workload, that's personally gonna be worth it to me because if my laptop slows down during a live Zoom call where there's like 400 people who have paid large amounts of money to attend my course, that's not a good look. So that's why, <laughs> that's another big part of why I'm going for the MacBook Pro, just in case I might ever need that sustained performance, even though right now I don't need to. So if for you, that is enough of a reason to justify the $300 investment, which I think it's an absolute no brainer if you're buying this as a business expense, then you should go for the MacBook Pro. If you're anyone else and you can't see yourself in those sorts of semi high stake situation where it is mission critical for your laptop to be performing at its peak capacity, then just go for the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air is absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in more information about these laptops, I have an in-depth review of the MacBook Air over here, and I have an in-depth review of the MacBook Pro over there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.